Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Animus Corporation, providing insulin delivery products for people living with diabetes and part of the One Touch family. And by Dexcom. Take control of your diabetes with the world's first continuous glucose monitoring system that sends glucose readings directly to your compatible smart device. Live life on your own terms with Dexcom. Hey, it's Stacy. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. I'm not a doctor. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacy Sims. This week, she shot to fame after an appearance on NBC's The Voice. Now, Ray Lynn is out with a big album, a big tour, and lots of fans who have type 1 diabetes, just like she does. I've had fans give me their pumps on stage and have me sign their diabetes bags and have me do all kinds of things. And when they give me their pumps, I'm like, why the heck do you not have that on? But I will sign it really fast. I always get on to them. Diagnosed at 12, Ray Lynn talks about managing diabetes on the road, challenges she faced early on, and why she's okay with Blake Shelton being the food police. Well, sort of. Plus, in our community connection, he was tired of waiting for options, so a North Carolina dad went on his own to get the flash glucose monitor, the Libre, right now not available in the U.S., but Steve Espin went on eBay. It's a trustworthy site, I guess, for most things, but this was an odd item to be on there, but it was the only way I knew how to get it. And so I knew that instead of having to continue to do what we were doing and and having to stick his fingers 10 times a day, that I was willing to try it. And in our Shop Talk segment, learn more about dancing for diabetes and about beta bionics, the bionic pancreas, from John Kostick, who you may remember is one of the very early developers of Night Scout. It all starts now on Diabetes Connections. Welcome to another week of the podcast. So happy to have you here on Diabetes Connections. We aim to educate and inspire about type 1 by sharing stories of connections from celebrities, athletes, authors, leaders in our community, as well as talking to the healthcare companies and the tech folks who are trying to make our lives easier and by sharing stories from, you know, quote, everyday people who are maybe not appearing on NBC's The Voice or cracking the code of the Dexcom and freeing the data, as one of our guests did a few years back. But, you know, just living day to day with this nonsense. I count myself in that category. My son, Benny, was diagnosed with type 1 right before he turned 2. That was almost 11 years ago. My background is in broadcast journalism. I spent my entire career in local TV and radio news. And now I'm doing the podcast. We have a lot to share this week. Of course, talking to Ray Lynn, who is out with a new album, and she is just great fun to speak to. We had a lot of fun talking to her. And it was interesting to hear her take on diabetes on the road and how other entertainers, including her mentor, uh, Blake Shelton, reacts to, you know, wanting to take care of her and making sure she's okay. And she's even taught him how to use glucagon. Can you imagine the headlines if he had to do that? And the news came out very recently, um, earlier this month, that the Freestyle Libre Flash Glucose Monitoring System was approved in the UK. We did a whole show on this last year. Uh, the Libre is not yet available in the US for patients. There is a blind monitoring kind of system that uh, some physicians can um, prescribe, but you don't see the results. They do. They actually used to do this with the Dexcom when it first came out and probably with other CGM systems like the Medtronic. But I thought this was a timely time, a timely time, a good time (laughs) to talk about the Libre again, because I ran into a dad in my local Facebook group. We have a big group here in the Charlotte area. We do activities and we were at a trampoline thing, you know, bouncy thing for all the little kids. And his son was the celebrity because he had a Libre. And if you're not familiar with this, we'll talk more about it. But it's basically a disc and it goes into the skin like a like a Dexcom or even, you know, a pump inset. You know how these things are inserted. And then it kind of stays there. You don't get alarms or alerts. You take the monitor that comes with it and kind of scan it. Almost like a supermarket scanner is how I've heard it described. And then you can see the number. Some people like it because there are no alarms. 
some people hate it because there are no alarms. It's also factory calibrated, which would mean fewer, no finger sticks. So we talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Again, it is not approved, at least as of, as of this recording, for uh, use in the U.S. other than physicians. But it'll be here and uh, then we'll really be able to see. But Steve, the guy I'm talking to, he got it off of eBay. I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll find out more. All right, quick word from one of our sponsors from Animus. And, you know, I was really excited to see that Animus and OneTouch are coming together. You know that I've been happy with Animus and its products for the t- more than 10 years that we've been using Animus pumps for Benny. We also love the OneTouch products that help us make managing his diabetes more simple. Putting these two brands together makes perfect sense to me. Now, OneTouch has an even wider range of products available to help people confidently move forward in managing their diabetes. Diabetes. To find out more about Animus, part of the One Touch family, go to diabetes connections.com and click on the Animus, part of the One Touch family logo. You may have seen some headlines recently. Um, Dexcom opens a data platform and launches developer program to fuel diabetes app innovation. That came over my Facebook feed, and I saw a lot of people really, oh, this is so exciting. This is great. I, I got to be honest with you, I didn't, I, did you understand when I read that headline? It didn't even sound like English to me half the time. So I'm the dummy who put on her Facebook feed, what does this mean? I, I put it on my personal Facebook page. So I, I asked uh, somebody from the Night Scout community or somebody more techie to put it in English for us, for those of us who maybe like seeing numbers on our phones, but, you know, don't do much else with them right? Diabetes data, there's a lot you can do with it. But, you know, I'm not an app developer. I have an app, but it's it's for the podcast. I don't have a, a diabetes app per se. So a couple of people chimed in, and I really liked uh, Christopher Snyder, who works with Tidepool. Um, he said that there's sort of a handshake that takes place to allow other applications to access the Dexcom data. So if you want to set up a uh, an app Every time you put in a calibration number or start a new sensor session, a little guy will pop up and say, great job, congratulations, you have calibrated successfully, separate from the Dexcom app. You can now do that more easily because you don't have to break into the the Dexcom data. It's there. It's open for everybody. I think a great example of this is we use an app for the Pebble Watch. And from where I sit, it's a piece of cake, right? You go to the App Store, you get what you need, click, 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 you put it on, and my Pebble Watch face can show the Dexcom numbers. Now, to me, that's really simple because somebody else did all the hard work on the other end. If this was in place, the person who developed the Pebble app wouldn't have to jump through so many hoops. It would be much easier for them. So it does open up the door for people to do, you know, good stuff, cool stuff easier. And we could incorporate more diabetes stuff into existing and future hardware, like watches and fitness devices, and even your car, stuff like that. So I hope it makes more sense to you. Hope I explained it a little bit better because it really is exciting. And when you think about it, if the pump companies would do the same thing, we would have a lot more do-it-yourself and easily accessible, um, you know, the open loop, the open APS stuff that I've talked about before. That's where I hope a lot of this is leading. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, what's interesting is I'm um, talking about this in the episode where I'm also talking to John Costick later on, because John is the person who four years ago now, I say freed the data. What he did was he figured out a way to take the Dexcom receiver information and make it available on any web-based device. If you're new to monitoring, you may think, well, it's on my phone. You know, It wasn't on your phone. It wasn't anywhere. It was only on the receiver a couple of years ago. So John Costick and many others in the We Are Not Waiting community have really pushed this stuff ahead. And now that John is working for Beta Bionics, oh, it all comes full circle. We got lots to talk about. All right. Let me tell you about our other sponsor about Dexcom. And I hope they don't mind that I felt like their release had to be translated for me. (laughs) It's all good. Okay. So when Benny was younger... He was totally out there sharing about his diabetes. He didn't mind checking or dosing in class, during sports, anywhere. But like a lot of middle school kids, I mean, he's in seventh grade, he's getting more private. And I was surprised to see how much the Dexcom is helping with that. Being able to discreetly check the display on his smart device or the Dexcom receiver is a lot less cumbersome than getting out all the gear to finger stick. The Dexcom G5 Mobile Continuous Glucose Monitoring System is the first FDA-approved device to let you make treatment decisions without pricking your finger. CGM-based treatment requires finger sticks for calibration may result in hypoglycemia if calibration not performed or symptoms expectations do not match CGM readings. 
For more information, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. My guest today has been in the public eye since two judges on The Voice fought over the chance to be her coach. Well, that was back in 2012. It is hard to believe it's been that long. And since she teamed up on that show with Blake Shelton, Ray Lynn has been working hard, touring the country, and is out with her first full album and headline tour. Diagnosed with type 1 at the age of 12, Ray Lynn is now a patient ambassador for Novo Nordisk, and we're catching up with her as she is spreading education and advocacy. Ray Lynn, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you spending some time. I know. I'm excited to be here. So this is great. I mean, you've been out there really for the last couple of years. I know you've been at the Friends for Life conference and now working with Novo Nordisk. Why is it important to you? Because you're busy with music. I mean, you've got a lot going on. You don't have to do the, you know, the diabetes thing. Why are you taking the time to do this? Well, it's important to me because it's my life. And it's something that I deal with every day. And I'm going to deal with for a long time until we do find a cure. And I think it's really important to tell your truths in your life. And something that is my truth is the fact that I have type 1 diabetes and the fact that I can help Anybody who has found out they have type 1 diabetes know that they can accomplish anything and do what their heart desires and follow their dream with having type 1 diabetes. It's absolutely amazing. I've said this story earlier, but a couple years ago, I was taking one of my insulin shots and I had a fan come up to me and she completely didn't know that I had type 1 diabetes. And at that point, I realized that I needed to start telling my story because there are so many of my fans that have type 1 diabetes, and if that's another, if me being confident in my disease can make them confident in theirs, then that's amazing. Yeah. And you were 12 years old when you were diagnosed. It sounds like it was a really rough diagnosis. Do you mind sharing what you remember about that time? Yeah. So I was 12, and I was going into um, DKA, which basically means that your sugar has been high for so long that you're organs are starting to shut down and my mom didn't know like what was going on with me she just thought that I was kind of getting out of my preteen phase you know I lost a little bit of weight and got a little taller and she just didn't put two and two together because she has type 2 diabetes but she didn't know there was much of a difference and she never thought well why would my daughter have type 1 diabetes she's so tiny she's young she didn't know that there was juvenile diabetes and neither did I and then I I remember waking up from a nap and my legs were very puzzly, black and blue, and it, I just did not feel right. Just I told my mom, I, and I'm not the type of kid that's like, I need to go to the doctor. I'm always the kid that never wants to go to the doctor and I can get over things because I just always thought I was really fearless. But I told my mom right then, I said, I need to go. I need to go to the doctor. And she wasn't at the house at the time, so my other family member took me to the hospital and She didn't feel comfortable driving me. She was like, I don't think you should. We need an ambulance. This looks bad. So we had an ambulance come pick me up. And it's probably a couple hours later. I mean, they when they checked my blood sugar, they realized quickly what it was. But they weren't going to just tell my mom that. But then not much time passed. And I found out that I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And they took me to a different hospital, which was Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas. How long did you stay in the hospital? It sounds like you were in, in pretty tough shape. I was in there a couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember feeling better once they figured it all out? I remember feeling better, but I remember thinking a part of me thought that I was only going to take shots and I was at the doctor. And then when they told me that I had to take shots after I left the doctor's oh. office, that's when I was like, I can't do this. Like, and though when they first told me, this is funny, when they first told me that I was going to have to get on insulin, I was like, okay, was it like a pill or something? Like, I didn't know what it was, you know? And it's so funny because then I was like, I'm going to have to go to the doctor's office every day for the rest of my life. Like, because I didn't, like I said earlier, I didn't like going to the doctor's office at all. And so when I found out that I was, then I was like finding out that I had to give myself shots. I was just so confused by the whole thing because I didn't know. But that. First of all, Texas Children's Hospital is such a a hospital full of love, and you would walk out of your room, and you would see, like, kids running down the hallways, and just everybody just in that place just is so full of love, and I'm obsessed with it. But, (laughs) yeah, I quickly learned. The reason I was there for a while is they really want you to leave 
knowing with you knowing how to take care of yourself because they don't want to like leave you in the middle of not knowing how to give yourself shots and check your blood sugar. So a lot of that time was education and getting my A1C down. It was just like getting my blood sugar down was kind of hard, but we, we made it work. Do you remember when you felt comfortable or at least gave yourself that first shot? Yes. I don't really remember the first day, but I remember the first week. Now I can, you know, give myself a shot driving and like, I'm not me driving when somebody else is driving, take that back. But like, I can give myself a shot anywhere, do it anywhere now. But then I'll be like, okay, I have to sit down. I have to put it all out in front of me. This is how many carbs I can eat. This is how many, you know, units I have to take. Like everything was just super, just, I was so like crazy about it because I didn't know how to do it, you know, and I wanted to be perfect at it. But uh, I remember just being super conscious. I wouldn't let anybody else give me a shot. Now my husband will give me a shot. And if anybody wants to give me a shot, I'm like, okay, you could try it. If you want to be a doctor, that's fine. I mean, I know how to help them if they want to. I remember my niece wanted to help me. And I was like, okay, well, I'm really going to have to help you puppy, but I'll let you give me, like, I let her press the button to give me my insulin. And she thought it was so cool. It was oh, super yeah. cute. How do you manage on the road? I can't imagine a more difficult career, right? There are very few careers that require you to get in the car and drive around as much as being a performer like you do. How do you manage? It's an up and down thing. It's something that takes practice. And the main thing is keeping stacks on you all the time and always being aware of what your blood sugar is. I think the hardest thing for me is, you know, when I wake up at the butt crack of dawn of 3 a.m. to get on a (laughs) 6 a.m. flight, I don't necessarily want to eat because that's so early. My stomach still hurts from the night before. So, um, but it's just about monitoring it and being very aware of your body and checking your blood sugar. I probably have to check my blood sugar more because I'm on the road at just different times and stuff. But always, I know that like, I always make sure I see where I'm going to be playing at before I go there, because if it's a pretty big city, they're going to have really great options. But if not, I might bring food because a lot of times it's hard to find good, healthy food for diabetes in some of these towns. Like all they have is a McDonald's or a Walmart or something like that. And I try to eat pretty high protein diet for my type of diabetes. So that's, I think, the, one of the most difficult things is trying to find good food. But and it's just about being really aware of your body. I'm so thankful for the whole carb to ratio diet. I when you're younger, they just give you a certain amount of carbs to eat in the morning and lunch and dinner, but for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But when you get older and you learn more about how to manage it, you get to do the ratio. And when I learned how to do the carb to ratio, carb to, you know, insulin ratio part, it was a lot easier for me to manage it on the on the road. Wow. You mentioned Texas. With all the recent weather, the hurricane, the flooding, uh, have you been in touch with people who are there? I know you've been uh, talking about helping out. Yes, I have been back to Baytown, which is where I'm from. Uh, this last week, I went down there to help. We, My family's church um, is in Baytown, and we gave over 700 boxes of cleaning supplies, food, diapers, dog food, kennels, anything that we could help, toll trees, anything we could help these families get through this awful time. I mean, my one of my cousins got seven foot of water in her house, and mm. to be able to to see her so heartbroken and see her house just like a disaster. I mean, it was just crazy. And you go into some of these neighborhoods that have been affected and it just looks like a war zone because all the sheet rocks in the street and all the stuff and you're waiting for dumpsters to come pick it up. I mean, I think the dumpster wait is still like a month away, like from people picking up stuff. So it's just, it's kind of crazy down there. But one thing I can say through all of this, disaster there's been such a community effort and just love that i've never seen before and i think in the time that we live in right now it's uh it's a really beautiful thing to see to see everybody helping each other because that's what america's about and that's what i love is to see that all right let's talk a little bit about the voice i'm sorry i know we were talking about diabetes so oh, much. you're fine that's great uh, so when you got Blake Shelton as your coach and now it seems like he's become a true mentor you've toured together he's a friend you post all these crazy funny pictures and everything what's it like having your own album out and your own tour and can I ask if you've you know how you've talked to him about that it is so cool to know that I have a record out it's that's my dream is to be an artist and to put out records and to put out great music Mm -hmm. and he is one of the most amazing people, one of my biggest advocates. And 
in music and just in life. And it's so funny. And he's one of those people, every time I see me like, did you eat? Do you need to take insulin? Are you okay? Like, or he'll say, Ray can't have that. She's got, she's got the BDs. He calls it the BDs. Like he is so always concerned about what I eat, if I've eaten and making sure that I always get food. And I think that that's so sweet. Did you have to educate him? I mean, I know it's, he's, he means well, but sometimes do you want to say, I can't eat that. Come on. I've got my insulin or I'm okay. Yeah, I've educated him before. He knows, and he knows what I can and can't eat. And That's funny. He's super sweet about it. And I showed him how to use the glucagon kit one time. I was like, hey, if I, you know, if something happens, this is how you use it. And he goes, well, that's not going to happen because you're going to eat in front of me. Like, he was just like, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, he knows. He knows. Can what you to imagine, do. though, if he had to use the glucagon kit on you, people would go bananas. That would not be hilarious because I wouldn't want to be in glucagon in that kind of state. But yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. So tell me more about the album and the tour. It's got to be really exciting for you. But these are songs you've written over the last couple of years, right? Are you still kind of, yes. I mean, you, and, and I, I'm speaking kind of as a mom, but you were 17 when you went on The Voice. And, you know, you're not a kid really anymore. Yeah, I started writing when I was 17. And the whole record, some of the songs I wrote when I was 17 and some I wrote when I was 21. Uh, that's why I think this record is so special, because it really shows you where I've been in the last four years or five years of my life. And I think that that's why it's done so well because it's really a snapshot of me becoming the woman that I am. And I love to see fans connecting to this record because every song is something that I've been through and every song comes from my heart. And I wrote 11 out of the 12 tracks, which I'm really proud of. Have you ever, going back to diabetes a little bit, when you're up there performing, have you had a part where you've you felt low or you've had to stop or anything unexpected has happened because of diabetes? You know what? I've never had that happen. There has been times before I walk on stage, it's like, you know, 87 or 88. Mm. And I'm just like, you know, at that point, I'm not going to risk it. So I'll just drink a little bit of juice before I walk on stage. But I've never had it go low, which I'm very thankful for. I would imagine, too, it's a lot of adrenaline when you're out there, which kind of keeps you yes, a little higher. Yes, it is. The only time it's ever gone low is... One time I was sleeping on the bus and I fell asleep so late that I was so tired. And I, my dog, I actually have a service dog that wakes me up when my sugar's low. And he went and woke me up. And it was like 1030 in, you know, in the morning. And I just slept so long. I didn't, you know, my pump's giving me insulin. So I, um, I guess I didn't eat enough the night before to counteract it. But he woke me up, which is really awesome. What's his name? His name's Jazz, like the music. And how long have you had him? Do you, do you like having the service dog for that? Oh, my gosh, I love him. I've had him now for a year and a half. So you mentioned a pump. Can I be nosy? Do you, what kind of pump do you use, and do you use a CGM? You know, everybody is different, and it depends on, you know, what what your doctor's recommended for you. I started off with a Novolog Flex Pen, and that worked great for me, and I still do use Flex Pen sometimes, but now I'm on the Medtronic pump, and I do use the Dexcom as well. Do you wear it on stage? I mean, how do you kind of hide it? Because you wear some cute costumes. It's different. Sometimes <laughs> if I have a really long set, like an hour, 15 set, I will wear it on stage. But if my set's only 30 minutes, I can take it off. Like, yeah. And sometimes if, and if my sugar's kind of high, I'll just take it. You know, that's why I always keep flex pens. I think it's super important to keep them with me because it's just easier for me to just give myself a shot and um, rather than wearing a pump on stage uh, sometimes. That's why I kind of do a little bit of both. Yeah, and I always we always have a pen with us just in case because you never know when, you know, my son plays a lot of sports and takes his pump off, so sometimes it's just easier. So so tell me a little bit about what you're doing with Novo Nordisk and what you're doing with JDRF, too. Yeah, so um, I think it was last year or the year before at Friends of Alive, they have, JDRF came out with those books in Novo Nordisk. To, it's basically, they have a book for every season of life if you're a two or three year old and you don't really know much about diabetes they have like this cute little blood drop that teaches you about diabetes and then they have a book for preteens and a book for you know being an adult and then a book for the caregivers their parents and their wives and their aunts or whoever is the person that they're with how they can help you know the person that they love manage diabetes which is really cool and my whole thing with being a patient ambassador with Nova Nordisk is just to tell my story and to tell why it's important to me to be a voice for having type 1 diabetes. And I've really needed a platform to be able to talk to people like you and to be able to get my story out there. And I've just loved being a partner with them. They're not just 
an amazing company, but they are just doing so much great goodness and awesomeness in the world of diabetes. That's great. All right. So here's kind of a silly question because there's this joke at, at the Friends for Life conference, and I guess just otherwise, where there's a number of country singers and songwriters who have type one. I mean, there's you, there's George Canyon from Canada, Crystal Bowersox, Amanda Joe, Eric Paisley. It's just kind of funny. Um, I know that you're friendly with Eric Paisley. Do you guys talk about that at all? Yeah, Eric is so sweet. When you meet somebody with diabetes, it's just a connection because you know on a daily basis what that person goes mm. through. So we just talk about how we handle it, and I give him tips on what things that I eat, and he tells me what he eats and that kind of thing. And he he's the one that actually recommended me for the Dexcom and was telling me how awesome he loved it, like how much he thought it helped him, and that part was cool. Oh, that's great. That's really cool. And you mentioned you started here at the beginning talking about how you – wanted to speak out more about diabetes after meeting a fan who was interested in it. Along the way, have you met more people who are kind of excited to learn more about your journey with type 1 because they're experiencing it as well? Oh, of course. Since I've been talking about it more and been more vocal about it, I've had fans give me their pumps on stage and have me sign their diabetes bags and have me do all kinds of things. And when they give me their pumps, I'm like, why the heck do you not have that on? But I will sign it really fast. I always get on to them. (laughs) So congratulations. I know you got married as well in in the last year or so. And your husband's in the, in the armed services. Did I read that? Yes. He's in the army. Wow. Well, let's thank him so much for his service and thank Thank you for everything you're doing. Oh yeah, of course. That is, you know, that's a big sacrifice, not just for him, but for you. I'm sure he's gone a lot, but, um, but I really appreciate you spending some time with me and telling your story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Stacey. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. Lots more information about Ray Lynn, uh, the album, all the info that you want at diabetes-connections.com or click in the show notes on the app or whatever podcast app you are listening to. And I just want to take a quick second to talk about that. We do have our own app. It's called Diabetes Connections for Apple or for Android. Very easy. And you always get the episodes as soon as they load. Sometimes it can take a little longer. If you're listening uh, through the iTunes store or through an Android app, uh, the best way to get it quickly there is to subscribe. And once you subscribe to the show, it, again, pops up pretty quickly. I, I put all these episodes out very early Tuesday morning so that when you wake up, you have them. And uh, if you don't see them loading, make sure you subscribe, and they should load a lot faster. But, of course, you can listen through social media. Wherever you found us is fine. A um, little difficult sometimes to get the show notes via social media. So if you're listening that way, you know, you clicked on a Facebook link, Please go ahead and go to diabetes-connections.com because I I really like to give you more information about everybody that we talk to and some of the devices and, you know, healthcare info that we put out there. But I thought Raylene was a lot of fun to talk to. And I love when she talks about Blake Shelton uh, being the food police. And and she did say, even in that interview and a little bit off the air, that she corrects him and, and she educates him. But I think that's sweet, just as she does. All right, my community connection this week is all about the Freestyle Libre. Uh, Steve Espen is a diabetes dad. His son, Ryan, uh, just turned seven recently, and he was diagnosed in January of 2016. I know Steve personally. He's in my local, you know, D-mom, D-dad group. And when we see Ryan at events, he always gets a lot of attention because the Libre is not available in the United States. And as you'll hear, Steve went online to get it, which still makes me nervous. But other people have done it, I guess. I do want to say before we get to the interview, a couple of quick things. Uh, Steve's big issue here uh, with the Dexcom was alarms. And after the interview, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we avoid that. Uh, but, you know, hear from him first. And I also want to talk about how we monitor overnight because not everybody does it the same way that we do, and it might help you out. So um, so stay tuned after that. I definitely want to tell you why I don't mind the alarms at all with the Dexcom, and I also don't get a bunch of false alarms. But, you know, you've heard me say before, I think that we need choice and we need competition in this community. It pushes everybody to get better. So here's my conversation with Steve about his son, Ryan, who wears the Freestyle Libre. Steve, thanks so much for coming on to talk to us about your experience with this. A pretty unique situation. I can't imagine there's too many people in the U.S. using this already. Thanks for coming on. 
Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll talk more about what made you choose uh, the Libre, how you went about getting it, how you get a lot of attention, let's say, <laughs> wherever you show up at a diabetes event. But let me start by asking you about what happened, because Ryan was diagnosed really um, less than a year and a half ago. Tell us uh, what happened and how he was diagnosed. Yeah. So Ryan was in preschool and we hadn't noticed anything different about his behavior or anything. Uh, when his teacher came up to us one day and she told us that we need to probably keep an eye on him, maybe take him to the doctor. He had been going to the bathroom a lot. He had been drinking a lot of water. So that kind of opened our eyes to that. And we took him to the doctor that afternoon. And uh, when we got there, he they did his test and they told us that he was type one. His blood sugar was 500 at diagnosis. So it was pretty fast. I mean, it wasn't a question of trying to figure out a mystery illness. You guys kind of got that diagnosis quickly at the at no. your pediatrician. That's great. Yeah, it was the same day. So I had no idea what it could be. And apparently his teacher knew. So she gave us the heads up. Of course, by that's great. I mean, I'm glad he didn't get sicker. Not that's great. I'm oh, glad yes. he has type oh, yes. no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah, the doctor thought we caught it fairly quickly. So he was happy about that part of it anyway. Yeah, that is uh, that's a good case scenario for something like that. Did they send you right to the hospital? Yeah, we went straight over, had an overnight visit. And uh, that was it's crazy. It all happened so fast. You know, you don't really know how to wrap your head around it. it. It is such a change, and that learning curve is so steep. What did you do in the weeks after that? Because we're talking about CGM or really flash glucose monitoring here with the Libre. Did you go to a pump quickly? Did you try a CGM quickly? Um, that sort of thing. We did not try a pump. Obviously, Ryan wasn't using a ton of insulin in the beginning. We were interested in the Dexcom. The doctor had mentioned it to us, but he wanted to watch him for a month or so before we tried that. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, basically we just were flying blind for about a month and, uh, you know, doing finger sticks, checking blood sugars, uh, you know, all that good stuff, using injections for him. And, you know, in the beginning, obviously we're crazy about it and we didn't know what we were doing, but, you know, you kind of figure it out along the way, you kind of do what you have to do and, then we, about a month later, we got the Dexcom. It was really neat. They showed us how to put it on. They put it on. It worked great. But those alarms drove me crazy, <laughs> crazy at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be so bad, but a lot of them were false ones. You know, we were getting the compression lows and, and uh, you know, they just kept driving us nuts. I'm just going to stop you there. I know, I know you don't have a, a frame of reference other than your own, but as somebody who we didn't get a CGM for seven years, um, we yeah. started just about three and a half years ago um, with a continuous glucose monitor with the Dexcom. It's amazing to me to think that one month after diagnosis, you had that kind of information. I'm not sure that I'm not sure my head would not have exploded with all that information one month after diagnosis, regardless of the alarms. I'm just curious. Did you find it helpful that soon? I mean, I know you don't have anything to compare it to, but was it helpful separate from the alarms or was it just too much information at that time? It was definitely helpful. Obviously, it was nice to be able to see the chart, the daily graph, so you could kind of uh, see where he was. I mean, it was more hectic because before we had it, you know, when you did his finger sticks, at, you know, before his meals, obviously his numbers looked pretty good because by the time the next meal came, it was back, you know, where it probably should be. Mm -hmm. Um but so when we started following this, it was crazy to see what his blood sugars would do after his meal, you know, how it would spike and then come crashing down before his next meal. So it was a relief for us. But at the same time, it was hectic watching that happen. I do think in the future that a CGM or, or even a flash glucose monitor is going to be standard of care at a type 1 diagnosis. I just don't have that perspective. And I'm, I'm so interested in how it is different now you know, for people who start monitoring so quickly. Okay, so the, the alarms are driving you crazy, which I think is kind yeah. of funny. Uh, what led you to switch to the Libre? And then we'll talk about how you found it or how you get it. But exactly. what, what led you exactly. to switch to it? Doing research on the internet. I'm crazy about the internet. Ever since, you know, his diagnosis, I've been on there probably daily, you know, looking for information and trying to find out new things and new technology. Uh, and I, I ran across the Libre and... um you know, did a little bit of reading about it, was really excited. Um, was like, I told my wife, Christy, I was like, we're going to get this thing. You know, it says you can check his blood sugar from his arm. You don't have to poke his fingers, this and that. Then I found out it wasn't available here. So that was kind of a bummer. But I was like, you know what? 
there has to be a way to get this thing. So that's what we did. How'd you get it? So do you mind sharing some of that information with no, us? You no, can no, share it. No. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> that's, it's, it's a fun, it's really crazy, but I just happened to look on eBay one day and uh, cause I, I do a lot of buying and selling on eBay. So I was looking on there and I said, well, you know what? I'm going to type this in and see if it pops up and it popped up. So we bought it. And uh, so we got the scanner and we, we bought six sensors, took a couple of weeks to get here. And then, you know, we put it on them and, it was amazing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, back up. You went on eBay? On eBay, yeah. Were you nervous? I mean, do you, you, know, had, you I, had you purchased anything over eBay? I think I bought a I, teapot once. I'm trying to think of what yeah, I've purchased. I, I, I know. I was nervous. I, I, I bought a lot of stuff on there. So, I mean, I, it's a trustworthy site, I guess, for most things. But this was an odd item to be on there. But it was the only way I knew how to get it. And so I knew that instead of having to continue to do what we were doing and, and having to stick his fingers 10 times a day, that I was willing to try it. So we bought it. That's great. So how long did it take to get to you and how did it come? Did it, did it, was it uh, medically packaged, that sort of thing? <laughs> no, it just came, it came in a box, you know, just a, just a brown box taped up and it took about probably two weeks to get here. How, how difficult is it to learn to, to do something like that, to insert it? Because, you know, with the Dexcom, a lot of people don't go through training, even though I know you're supposed to. So disclaimer there. But, you know, yeah. they'll watch a YouTube video or they'll just watch the video that comes with it. Libre, just as easy. Yeah. Yeah. I pulled I pulled YouTube up and I watched a, an insertion video of a child. And that was that's all I did. I probably watched it 20 times before I attempted it, though. And uh, but, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty simple. It was we've never had a pump, so I'm not really familiar with, um, you know, the line set insertions. but but the inserter looked very similar to what I've seen those look like. Mm. And it's, it's very similar. You know, you put it on the back of their arm, just kind of pop it on and then it just starts. It's, it's great. And there's no calibration, right? No, no calibration. It's factory calibrated. So no yucky finger sticks. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. We, I recently did uh, an, an episode with JDRF's uh, Tom Robson, who has been very much involved in the artificial pancreas trials and, he had mentioned that with the factory calibration of devices like the Libre and then the next Dexcom that's supposed to be coming out, there's going to be a bunch of new people, kids and adults with type 1, who are diagnosed and do no finger sticks, or, or at least minimal, you know, when the equipment yeah. is, is working and they're wearing it. But that, to me, yeah. is absolutely amazing <clears throat> to think about. You did post a video in our local group uh, with your son uh, showing the insertion and how it all works, which was great because there was so much interest after we all saw you at an event. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and, and I definitely want to talk about the interest you get. But what was his reaction to it? I mean, kids are so resilient most of the time. I'm sure he didn't mind it too mm. much. But did he like it better than the Dexcom or did he, did he notice any difference? Yeah, um, the thing that he liked the most about it uh, over the Dexcom was the size. That was the one thing, you know, with the Dexcom, he's very athletic. He plays sports. He plays basketball, soccer, football. So, you know, he would get it caught up on things or, or kids would grab it or, you know, things like that. And uh, the thing with the Libre, it's, it's probably about the size of a quarter. You know, it's a little thicker, but it's a lot harder to get stuck on something, you know. Mm, it's flat. So that was, yeah, it's flat. So uh, that was that was one of the things. And the other thing is he didn't, you know, that alarm would wake him up three or four times during the night and he wasn't really getting a lot of sleep. So he would be irritable. So those were the two things that he was, he was most happy about. So explain to us how it works, because I understand that you kind of wave the receiver over it, but practically speaking, how do you check his blood sugar now or his blood glucose now, I should say. Okay. You know, a lot of people probably haven't seen the little scanner, but it's just a little device. It's probably similar to any kind of little, the Omnipod device, something like that. It's very small hit a button on it, wave his arm, you know, over the scanner, which you can do it through heavy ski coat. I've done that. So that's pretty nice. And it just pops a number up and, and you're done. But it doesn't alarm, right? It won't tell no. you when he's high or it, low. We have to we have to wave no. the receiver over it. Yeah, you have to wave the receiver over it. There are no alarms. So it, it won't tell you that. And, and that's, that's a turnoff for a lot of people. Uh, for me, not so much. You know, I keep pretty tight readings on him anyway. So we're scanning him a bunch and I'm not overly concerned about, about that part of it. Well, listen, and I'm not here to judge. Everybody takes away what they need or, you know, uses what they need. When you're using it, 
or when he's using it, as you said, through ski clothing, through pretty thick clothing that didn't seem to get in the way? No, I was wondering about that because they said you could do it through clothing. And so I figured shirts or whatever, you know, would be fine. But yeah, I mean, we've had a little bit of snow here in Charlotte, which is, we don't get that too often, but (laughs) he was outside. He had a ski coat on and I, I tried it and it scanned right through it. It was amazing. How do you get your supplies then? Do you still go through eBay? No, I, I, uh, a lady that I met through buying them on eBay, I contacted her outside of eBay. And so she, she ships them to me now. Every time, you know, we, we buy six at a time. So three months supply, we, when the time's up, I shoot her an email and she sends me another six. And how long do they last? How long can he, he keep it? Can, you know, does Ryan wear it in his arm? Yeah, they're good for 14 days. It's pretty good. I'd like it if it could be a little longer because they stick so well. You know, I have to practically dig them off, you know, by the time, you know, that 14th day. And I'm like, I know it would go another 14 days. So if they could make these things good for a month, it would be awesome. Does it automatically turn off or something? Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just kills it. Then you put it and you just swipe it and it says, you know, inserting a new sensor. You want to start it now. And, And you just hit yes. So let's talk about the reaction you've received. Again, this is a product that is not available in the United States at the time of this taping. And it is something that um, I've heard of a few people getting, as you did, either through a trip to Europe or a friend in Europe or Australia or eBay. But we had an event recently where there were, I don't know, a couple of dozen parents. It was a really nice turnout and kids and you were pretty much a star attraction. What's that like for you and Ryan? People are so curious. I know it's crazy. Every time somebody sees it, they ask me about it. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, everybody talks about it. You know, when we were, when I went to the event, you know, I talked to most of the parents probably about it and, uh, you know, they're just so interested in it. And there, there is a lot of interest, you know, I think there's definitely something that's going to pick up, you know, here in the States when that thing is approved, I think it's going to be very, very popular. What does your endo think? Is your endocrinologist okay with the, uh, the the European product in your kid? Yeah, he loved it. He uh, he actually, he asked me to bring it in because he had never seen one. So, you know, I brought it in and, and he was amazed by it. He loves everything about it, but like so many people, the, his only concern is the alarm function of it. But Ryan's A1Cs are, are in check and they're really good. So he, he trusts us. So, you know, he's, he loves the device. I happen to know who your endocrinologist is, if you don't mind. We'll talk about him very briefly, not by mm-hmm. name, but he is such a great person for new technology. He has type 1 himself. He has since he's been a teen, and he loves that kind of stuff. I mean, you you kind of – had he always been Ryan's endo? Because I think you got lucky with who, with yeah, who you yeah, got. Yeah, from the very beginning, yeah, he was. And uh, and we, you know, Ryan clicked with him instantly. We We loved him instantly. He's such a nice guy. Yeah, and, uh, and obviously can relate on a personal level. Yeah, I mean, I love everybody in that practice. We have a different endo. I just think that uh, the doctor you've got loves the technology. So that's pretty funny that uh, that works out pretty well for you. Yeah, yeah. I think that, and I will confirm this, I think that the Night Scout folks who, um, I don't want to say hacked, but I guess that's what you call it, who originally figured out a way to get into the Dexcom, and have the numbers available on any web-based machine, have done the same thing with the Libre, and you're able to get alarms and things like that with the Libre. Have you looked into that at all? I know you're not that interested in the alarms, but is that something that you you might check out? You know, I never, I never have. I haven't looked into it, but here again, the alarm would be great. It'd be a great feature if it didn't go off when it's not supposed to. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, so I have noticed with, with this, um, with the Libre, it doesn't have the um, so-called compression lows. Mm. So I'm thinking that if they could somehow get an alarm in this unit, that the alarms could be avoided, which would be great. I'd love to have it on there if, if it didn't wake me up four times a night. So how's Ryan doing? Um, how, I mean, he's in kindergarten now? Yeah, he's in kindergarten. He uh, he's doing great. You know, he hasn't skipped a beat. Like he hasn't complained the first time about anything. You know, the injections, the finger sticks. He's just taking it with stride. You know, he doesn't complain at all. And he plays. You know, like I said, he plays football, basketball, and soccer. He runs around with all the other kids. You know, and he he still has the food that he ate before. We haven't really switched his diet that much. You know, obviously he doesn't get quite as many 
desserts and snacks as he got before, but he still gets his his fair share. And you have a you have a young daughter, right? Uh, how's your family doing? Yeah, it's, it was tough in the beginning. You know, it's definitely something that affects the, the entire family. Christy's great. They've been troopers, you know. I mean, Ryan, you know, he's gone through some periods of highs and lows. And, you know, we've been up during the nights and gotten calls from school and he's low and had to, you know, adjust things like that. But overall, everything's great. You know, my daughter's great. You know, we're just hoping for the best, you know, with her that uh, nothing else mm-hmm. comes about, you know, for her in the future. What is your advice for parents who are in a similar situation that you are in, whatever their equipment or, you know, the way of managing, they're not satisfied with. Um, I have to say, I think you're pretty forward thinking. I also think you got a little lucky, um, you know, with your good eBay purchase. But what yeah. do you, what would you say to other parents? What have you said? Because I know you get a lot of questions. Yeah, I, uh, I don't try to sell the device. You know, obviously that's not my intention. Hmm. Whatever they're using, you know, if it works for them, it's great. Um, I just explain to them about it because they ask all the time give them all the, the information on it. And, you know, if they want to try it, I would definitely recommend it. It's, it's been great for our family. I thought it was interesting that uh, one of the Panthers asked me about scanning him one time. Where was this? His, my son plays basketball with Greg Olson. Okay. Son. And so we were at the church and playing, you know, basketball or whatever. And he approached me after the game and, and he asked me what I was doing because he noticed that I was swiping his arm. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so I got, into this, I got into this conversation with him about, you know, this and that. And he looked at me, he had these huge eyes and he's like, man, he goes, that is a game changer. And I was like, yep, it is a game changer. <sighs> That's <laughs> interesting. Just a little nonchalant conversation with Greg Olson. Yeah, pretty cool. He's that a nice is, guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. And I bet he knows a lot more about medical stuff than anybody would want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's his foundation. He's, he's very active in all that. So yeah. he... Yeah, you know, his son's had issues. but That's what I mean. He's been in the hospital a ton, so I know he's been around people with illnesses. He lives up there, they say. So he's a great dude. I should probably explain a little bit more about Greg Olson. Uh, he's a, he's a superstar with the Carolina Panthers here where I live, but he has a son who was born with a rare heart defect. And so he had surgeries and uh, the Olson family has been a huge supporter of uh, our local children's hospital. Uh, he was up for man of the year. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of stuff. So that was kind of nice, uh, for Steve to get to, to meet Greg and to show him, you know, what we're doing here in the diabetes community. And I also need to point out, I almost forgot that I checked into it. And yes, there is a Night Scout for Libre. So if you want, I guess if you want those alarms and you want to see the numbers, you can check out and I'll link it up. Uh, Night Scout has done this. I, you know, I don't know how they do any of this, but I'm happy to pass along the information. Okay, so let me talk to you a little bit about how we monitor at night. I'm not trying to convince you, you know, that one is better than the other. As you heard Steve say, he knows a lot of people really like the Dexcom alerts. And frankly, we'll probably try out the Libre at some point, but I can't imagine not having those those low alerts, right? I mean, that's what most of us parents really want. So the first night, almost four years ago, that Benny had the Dexcom on, we let him sleep with the receiver. We didn't think anything of it. And of course, you know, it went off in the middle of the night. It scared him. He was, you know, he was nine. So it wasn't a a little, little kid, but you know, it startled him. And he was like, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to wear it. So we knew that we had to figure something else out. And, uh, you know, if you're a parent of a kid with diabetes or an adult with type one, you you know, you're never getting enough sleep to begin with. And so you don't want unnecessary alarms of waking up your child or yourself. So we decided that we would not have Benny wake up to his own alarms until he was older. In the back of my head, I'm thinking senior year of high school, frankly, you know, before he leaves me, <laughs> but um, but no sooner. He's also prone to migraines. So, you know, he really needs his sleep. And this is more, I don't know, is this more of a parenting decision than a diabetes decision? But he does not have the Dexcom alerting in his room. What we do is we put his phone out in the hallway. We have a bench um, my husband's pretty handy, and this is pretty simple, but to me, it's it's like expert level. We have a bench that we bought. It has three drawers in it, and he drilled holes in the bottom of the drawers so everybody can put their electronics in at night and charge them, but they cannot have them in their rooms. And I'm a very light sleeper, so if anybody's sneaking, I hear the drawer, I hear the drawer open, and they're busted because this is not just about diabetes. This is about electronics at night. So iPads, phones, MP3 players, you know, you can keep your alarm clock. That's about it. So everything lives in there. And it is, I measured it off the other day. It's about 16 feet 
in a straight line from the bench where his phone lives to his body to his bed (laughs) to where the transmitter is so um it works pretty well and i sometimes i have to move the phone around i take it out of the drawer and i put it on the ground but we do not lose signal overnight the alarm can go off it can go off on my phone wake me up but then it doesn't wake my son up and to me that's really important so i know not everybody can find the right length and bluetooth through doors is difficult too but um, I, I just don't want him sleeping with the alarm right next to him. I don't, I don't think it makes any sense to wake a kid up because their alarms are going off. The parent's going to take care of it anyway. I mean, your four-year-old isn't going to treat by himself. So that's my opinion. So the other thing about the alarms going off is if you have what Steve mentioned as a compression low, And this can happen if you are leaning on the part of the body where the Dexcom transmitter is. My understanding as a layperson is that the circulation slows to the point right around the transmitter and the sensor that the Dexcom system believes that there is a low blood sugar there, right? There's just not a lot of circulation and it reads that as a low blood sugar. So you get these false lows. So anytime we get a low like that, we do finger stick. You can kind of see it fall off like a cliff. It's not a regular low. It's kind of like, oh, we're cruising at 95, we're cruising at 110, and then two minutes later, boom, you're at 60, boom, you're at 45. So we always check. And then if it is a compression low, you leave it alone. You don't calibrate, you roll the kid over and you leave it alone and it catches up. People have put devices. I'll put this in the Facebook uh, page and maybe we can comment on it because I know people have put stuff over the Dexcom. What we have found best is just moving to a location on the body that he doesn't sleep on. And that really has helped us. We have not been prone to compression lows over the years. If you have and you want to weigh in on this, please let me know. But I just wanted to tell you that, you know, everybody's experience is different. And uh, I'm glad Steve talked to me. But I thought maybe our method might help you if you're having issues with your kid waking up for alarms. Okay, there's a lot going on in the show, and I am just adding to it. So let's get on to our Shop Talk segment. The Shop Talk segment is something that I added recently. I am going to conferences quite a bit. And one of the cool things about these conferences is that you get to meet all sorts of vendors and exhibitors that, you know, don't come to your neighborhood meetup, right? And I wanted to bring a lot of that to you. So today, you're going to meet somebody from Beta Bionics and somebody from Dancing for Diabetes. And we've talked to both of these groups. I have episodes uh, focused on both, and I'll link those up in the show notes as well. And I want to start off with John Costick. As I explained, John has a son who has been diagnosed with type 1. His name's Evan. And four years ago, uh, John put out a tweet. It's probably four and a half years ago at this point. He put out a tweet with a picture of his son's Dexcom numbers on a uh, a laptop. And we all freaked out and said, how did you do that? And um, that became the basis for uh, Night Scout and so many other uh, self-monitoring hacks. I hate to call it a hack, but, you know, for lack of a better term, we talked to John about that experience in an entire episode. So please go back and listen to that. But he started working at Beta Bionics, which is Ed Damiano's company developing the bionic pancreas, in April of 2017, which is really exciting. I think, because I love what John has done. I love what Beta Bionics is doing. So I caught up with John at the Friends for Life conference. The audio is not perfect, but the information is great. And here's what John had to say. I am developing software for all of our systems. So any any piece of our system that needs software written, I'll be intimately involved in and working on. So there's a a lot of tasks. We're small, but very agile group. So. What excites you about the company? That it's an opportunity to build a system and integrate their hard work over the past you know decade or so, and to take the bionic pancreas technology and build an entire platform. That really that excites me. That's what I want for anyone with diabetes and of course my 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 own loved one my son Evan and what does a platform just, mean I mean what is I don't I don't know what that means I, I see this as a pump that's you know does amazing things right so beyond the pump there are algorithms that handle the control between the CGM and the insulin and glucagon delivery so the, the entire platform is all of those components and then how do we integrate it into into people's lives, right? So the, the technology around those components becomes very important 
for people that need to live with these devices. So we're working very hard to make sure this device integrates into people's lives comfortably and really reduces the burden of the di- of diabetes. What have you learned since Evan's diagnosis, like the first couple of months when you were trying to figure things out to this point that's useful here? You know, what kind of things do you say, oh, yeah, that's a good, I want to incorporate that, or, hey, you know, I, I like that part. So I, th- I think there are pieces of that sort of we-are-not-waiting DNA, the, the Night Scout system, the from the remote monitoring to just data accessibility that, I, that I'll work hard to integrate into to the system. So it's just having access and having an intuitive way to, to, to view the data or absorb the data or communicate the data with as many and many folks that they may that may need it and but also the, the individual themselves has to be a comfortable device so we spent a lot of time you know building evan's system for him so he's comfortable and he can live with it day to day and and it's not a burden to him or as little burden as possible I know you're not a salesperson, but give me the pitch on, on beta bionics and the bionic pancreas. Why is this one better? Why will it be better? I don't think I can actually say. Oh, okay. Point. That's cool. I think cool. it's actually an FDA sort of regulatory issue. Since we haven't come through our clinical trials, I can't speak to the islet itself, but, but people can look at bionic pancreas studies that have, that have come before. Right, and that, that's the technology we're integrating into this, into this system. So our, our goal is is to, to build a great system. For so when I look at the website and say, oh, look, a dual-chamber pump, and isn't that interesting? There's a lot more going on that you guys probably can't talk about yet. To a certain I, degree, yeah. The, I don't mean like a three-chambered pump. I mean just algorithms and things that you can't. Yeah, so a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the clinical study data people can look at and, and, and see what we're, what we're putting into the island. Great. How is Evan doing? How are you guys doing? Good. It's, um, you know, you know, type 1 is very difficult sometimes and it just it can be all consuming and then when when your day job and your night job is sort of all wrapped into type 1 diabetes sometimes you need a break once in a while but we're doing doing well he's healthy he's happy he's he's a nine-year-old boy who gets to do pretty much everything he wants to do so we're blessed he's a wonderful boy and he's, he's inspired me to do do a lot more with my life than i ever planned on doing so A big thank you to the folks at Beta Bionics because as I was interviewing John, we noticed that the back of my portable recorder was missing. Um, in all of the conference kerfuffles that go on, the battery door was gone. So, John, if you're curious, I still have that piece of duct tape that you guys gave me. Much appreciated and never did find the door uh, that holds in the batteries. So, gosh, you know, really appreciate Beta Bionics has helped me out already. Okay, continuing our shop talk segment, Dancing for Diabetes is a great group out of Florida. They were formed 17 years ago. Uh, it started as a neighborhood fundraiser. You know, many of us do that, but it has expanded now to the point where they have an annual benefit show. Uh, they have conferences. I'm going to be speaking at their conference in the spring. I'm excited about that. And so to tell us more about Dancing for Diabetes, here's Kelly Symbolic. We uh, spread awareness through the art of dance to better educate the community, raise funds to find a cure, and inspire those with diabetes to live healthy and active lives. So once a year, we have our annual fundraising dance show, and it's a huge production that involves over 350 dancers in the Central Florida area. And we perform here in Orlando, and money from that event goes towards research. And you do programming throughout the year. And then, yes, in addition to that, throughout the year, we have a Kids and Teens with Diabetes Dance Program, which offers free dance classes to kids with type 1 in the fall. And we have an awareness campaign every year, producing videos to spread awareness on a more global scale um, about type 1 diabetes. This just seems like it's fun. Is it fun? Yes, it's just very fun, and we love um, the kids and the families involved in our programs. Just all, It's just fun for them, and they get together, and it just creates sort of a type 1 community all year round for them. How did you get involved? Do you dance? I do dance. I am actually the instructor for our kids and teens dance classes. I've been involved since the very beginning. Um, our founder and director, Elizabeth Forrest, I've been in school with her since she started the organization, and so I've just been involved ever since and love it. What's it like? to be 
I mean, some of the kids I know at an event like this, too, they may not have done dance before, or they have done dance, but not with somebody with diabetes. You know, what's it like for you to kind of teach them and take them through it? Um, it's it's super fun. I actually don't have type 1 diabetes myself. Um, Elizabeth has been my connection um, with two type 1. So getting to know these kids that do have type 1 and knowing that I'm making some sort of an impact on their lives and, and the lives of their family is just super fulfilling. And um, I'm very passionate about it. More information on Dancing for Diabetes at diabetes-connections.com. And, of course, all the stuff we talk about is there. Phew. All right. We were all over the place. This was kind of a kitchen sink of an episode. But I'm so glad that you stayed with us. Lots of good stuff here. And that's what I'm here for is to tell these stories and to get our voices out there. If you have a story to tell, please, please send it to me, Stacy at diabetes-connections.com or anywhere on social media. The Facebook page is a great one. You can message me there as well. And that's Diabetes Connections. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as well as Stacy Sims. So you can pretty much find me all over social media and um, really just would love to hear from you. If you like the show, please pass it along to somebody touched by diabetes. Word of mouth is the best way to get this out there. We're a small community, but we have a big voice and we use it. So I appreciate you letting other people know. I want to let you know a couple of things about conferences and appearances coming up. Um, I was actually supposed to be at a conference this weekend in Greensboro, but they have postponed it. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in that part of North Carolina, and I'll let you know when they redo the date. And I'm excited about that one because I'm doing a new presentation all about social media, about using social media well when you have type 1 diabetes or you have a child with type 1 and not getting sucked in by the fear and craziness that can be out there. I'm going to the Diabetes Unconference and the Weekend for Women. That's coming up in October. I am thrilled to go there for the first time. There's also a Friends for Life conference, or I guess it's a Children with Diabetes conference in October that is in Falls Church in Virginia. Um, so that's there as well if you're interested. And I will be speaking at a JDRF conference in Tampa in December, and then we're already looking at stuff for next year. So if you have a conference or you'd like me to come speak, please let me know. You can always email me or reach out through the app or through the website. I do several different presentations, and I would love to come and speak to your group. As always, thank you to my editor, to John Buchanan. He is so great at audio editing solutions. And thank you to you as you listen. The show is here for you. I am thrilled to do it every week. And I appreciate you listening. I know your time is valuable and it's fun to spend this one hour a week together, you know, with people who, who get it, really. I'm Stacey Sims and I'll see you back here next week. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.